you guys can unmute for a moment and, and let us know verbally that you're here. Uh, Tom Pentelo. I'm here. My son is here too. He'll be on in a minute. Okay. Judy Keene. Here. Joya Zach. I'm here. I need to leave at one o'clock just to let you know. You got me beat. Uh, Deb Raymond. Here. Morella's iPad. I know Morella's might be in listening mode, but Morella uh, is here. I'm here. Uh, Ms. Civitello. I'm here. We're wonderful. Um, I think that's everybody uh, on the council that, uh, that I'm aware of. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Carson. I've got the participants list over your face here on the screen. So my apologies, Mr. Carson, there you are. Um, I, that I think concludes everybody. Um, and with that being said, this meeting is being recorded uh, per the government's order. Um, so welcome everybody, great to see you. Um, let's dive right into it. Uh, Pete, if we wanna just start with the uh, development project update, that would be great. Sure. A uh, couple of projects you may have noticed are under construction. The Chase Bank um, is now um, move, moving along with the foundation. The Puritan Medical Office, Puritan Furniture Medical Office is back there, are well uh, making great progress. Uh, the Popeye's Restaurant is uh, starting to come out of the ground. Uh, Cedar Mountain is trying to wrap up uh, that building on the front. Uh, and then any day now, and it may have already started, is the uh, Granite Showroom up on the Berlin Turnpike. Uh, we issued permits for that, so uh, things should be moving along there as well. A couple of uh, things to report, maybe some new things. Uh, 147 Main Street uh, recently sold to a new owner. That's the old um, uh, Charlie Ford uh, frame shop. Um, 280 Main Street is also available. Some folks are looking at that. That's <coughs> the uh, wellness, the old wellness Bless center. Um, <coughs> plugging along with the potential buyer for the uh, 245 Main Street, the Masonic building. Let's see, a couple things up near the Berlin Turnpike. <clears throat> Planning and zoning has an application pending for a new medical office building on Progress Drive. Excuse me. Um, got a call from somebody looking to buy the Atlas Tile Shopping Center up on the Berlin Turnpike. We have a development group that has approached us about buying the, um, sorry, one second here about buying the um, approved uh, self-storage site up on Arrow Road. Uh, the uh, Con building, which is 885 Wells Road, uh, which is at the corner of Progress Drive on Wells Road is now available. I uh, got a call from a realtor about that the other day. Uh, the Elm Motel up on the Berlin Turnpike, you may have seen that in the Hartford Business Journal, sold for 500,000. And just so you also know, we've issued an enforcement order against the uh, nursing home property on Jordan Lane. Uh, that site has continued to be uh, problematic with dumping, people breaking into the building and that kind of thing. So the fire marshal has issued an order that they um, secure the building with some level of fencing so that the dumping and that activity does not continue uh, to increase. So he's working with the, uh, with the owners right now. Uh, I got an email from the owner of 1000 Silas Dean Highway, AJ Funaro, who has an interested party and would like to set up a meeting with us to discuss uh, what they are thinking about doing with the property. So there's a lot, a lot of things going on. Excellent. And Dawn, uh, for your record, uh, George Oikel has joined the call. Uh, Tony Martino has joined the call and Cindy Jacobs have joined the call also with regards to um, attendees. Um, okay. Uh, you said Tony Martino, George o Oikel, and who was the other name? Cindy Jacobs. Cindy Jacobs. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's great, Peter. Um, ABC Burger. Um, are they thinking about starting it all this year? Or are they still thinking 22? I think at this point it's 22. Uh, I, have, I have not confirmed that with, with Joe uh, yet, but um, uh, let's hope um, that that will go forward. Okay. 
Um, was there anything, any new developments on the uh, Rite Aid um, scenario? I know they're talking about splitting that up potentially. That was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission at their last meeting. Um, so we're waiting for uh, the engineers to come in with the final revised plan so that those can be filed uh, on the LEN records. But that was approved um, by the um, present property owner and uh, which, which makes, um, you know, moves, moves that one step closer to happening. Okay. Any questions from the commission on development project updates? Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, our outreach survey, I know that you said we had um, some things were percolating on that uh, based on our last conversation. So at this point, as of this morning, I think we've gotten 20, 20 uh, survey uh, uh, complete, 20 survey responses completed. So we're gonna wait. Um, we'll probably put out another reminder uh, to the business community about uh, paying attention to that and taking some time to respond to the survey. So um, as they say, they're beginning now to come in. Um, I got the invoice from Minuteman. So I'll talk to Denise and we'll get that, we'll get that process. It took obviously a lot longer than we had envisioned for that to get out the door, but um, let's hope we have a, a high response rate. Um, I think 11, 1108 was the final number that went out after we cleaned up the database. Okay. I know with ABC Burger, um, they were going to uh, have to go back through PNZ uh, because they were thinking about scaling uh, the facility down. Um, are they, they've been back to them at all yet? Um, okay. They've talked to us about, you know, what the process would be. Uh, they, they had a, uh, an attorney handling that for them. Um, so I have talked to the attorney about that and um, not sure where they are. It probably, um, I would think their plans are probably being redesigned right now by their architect and by their uh, engineers just to make sure everything still works with the, with the changes. There's a lot of give and take between um, Joe Sulo and, and um, PNZ and, and Historic District, et cetera. And I just wanted to know if they had started anything, um, especially with Historic District yet, but it sounds not, like- Not yet. I think okay. if he keeps if he keeps the you know the same materials the same elements yep. the same general style and just compresses it down there, there really shouldn't shouldn't be any problem with getting through the commission since it's already been approved once. Okay, started to jump around. Okay. Um, any other questions on the business outreach? Anybody know what what we should expect on um, what the percentage is? You know, on mailers, I know it can be single digits on getting responses. Any any ideas? what we might look at, what we should be maybe contemplating getting back? Is it one of those 5% things? I think it, I think it tend to be maybe 30, 30%. If, oh, but we've made, good. but we've made this with the online capabilities. So hopefully in this day and age, it encourages a higher, a higher response rate. We're not, we're not off to a flyer. So I'm a little bit concerned. Um, it came in a town of Weathersfield envelope. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so the open rate should be pretty good. Deb, were you gonna mention something? Um, I was just gonna say, you know, uh, when we do mailings in real estate, we don't expect that higher return. We usually are happy with 10 or 15%. Okay. Thank hopefully, you, Deb. Ho hopefully Peter's more accurate at 30. Mark, Very good. Uh, if, Mark, I have a question. For Peter, actually, um, we have the capacity to do reminders, right? Since we have a, a certain capacity, we don't uh, have a one of the reasons we're doing this is to get a better capacity to reach out to the community. So we have a, a certain database um, of emails and that kind of thing. It's not uh, it's less than eleven hundred. So. I'm happy to send that out in the, in the next e-blast that the chamber does for, as a reminder. Good idea. That would be good. Uh, but uh, my suggestion is with the success of the Bikes on Main, maybe to say to businesses, you know, you've seen the Bikes on Main. These are some of the things that the town supports and can help you with your business. You know, use it, use it as a starting point for an email. Be sure to get there before the end of May. Very 
very good. Thank you for the comments. Um, any other questions on the business outreach survey? Okay, Pete, tax incentive policy update. That one's been hanging around. What are we doing there? Uh, it's on my it's on my desk. Um, I've started to work on the actual language and I've um, been able to carve out a little bit of time but not finished it yet. So uh, yeah. my goal is to have it redrafted at least by your next meeting. So probably scheduling a uh, subcommittee meeting of the finance committee uh, might give me a specific date by which you know I need to need to really spend time. So a deadline would be good. Um, we'll at the end of the meeting we'll schedule a subcommittee meeting um, for finance. Um, great. Any other questions on tax incentive? Great. Um, Salastine Highway. Uh, as you guys know, um, we've um, uh, the very nicely the town managers put a placeholder. Uh, budgetarily for us um, uh, in for someone to be focused on the Salstein Highway initiative. Um, we have a great foundation on, on uh, reports that we paid for in the past. There's two of them that we could refer to. Um, I know that we are in the process of the budget being approved and it's being milled around. Um, uh, Peter and I, uh, and I know Gary, have um, had some casual and semi-formalized conversations with people um, uh, on the council and we're trying to be solid proponents for that. Um, anything that you can do uh, as a group to reach out to anybody that you may know on the council or whatnot uh, to help forward that position would be great. Um, as you know, I think we had a $50,000 placeholder there. The budget is tight, uh, but the, the whole idea behind it uh, is that we feel that with somebody specifically focused on that initiative um, and using the templates of the uh, reports that we've had done on improving the Salestine Highway. We've got a pretty good roadmap on what to do, but in light of the current um, federal administration's budget on infrastructure, and again, whatever that means these days, um, I, I, my guess is there's gonna be some significant funding avail available um, and we wanna be able to take advantage of that and have somebody really focused on that. And um, we're hoping that the council uh, reflects kindly uh, on that. Um, Anything uh, from the group with, oh, and, and I'm, I'm sure you guys saw the email from Gabe D'Amico. Um, I did speak with Gabe prior to the meeting. He's still very interested in being actively engaged. Uh, if we can get this particular individual on board um, uh, as a stakeholder on the Salestine Highway, he's got a lot to say. And because he's a stakeholder, he's got a good position or he speaks from a, from a good position. He says he's got a number of other people that he's spoken to on the Salestine Highway, other stakeholders that would be part of any group that we would put together. Um, uh, once it, with we, if, again, if we do get this individual uh, and we do formalize uh, this Silestein Highway um, uh, focus committee, whatever we would call it uh, legally, um, any questions or comments uh, regarding uh, that? Mr. Carson? Uh, Peter, did we put in, uh, did we apply for that planning study? That the do no, the, the DOT never did respond to our uh, interest in, in doing that. So without their uh, support, we, um, we let the deadline pass. Uh, this is an, I think an annual initiative. So um, if we make any progress in the future, we're gonna follow up with the DOT and just get a better handle on you know, where they are with some of these uh, ideas that we'd like to pursue, but they never did respond to me as we expressed an interest in going for that funding. So. Without that support, we did not submit the request for funding. How do we get the DOT to respond to us? That's a good question. We do have uh, one of our delegation who's on the transportation committee, so that might be that might be a good way of, of getting that attention. I'm going to follow up specifically, though, and you know, continue to to beat away at that at least to get a response as to you know, wh whether they they see the, they, they have the same vision that we might have. So uh, I'll certainly do that. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then I think, you know, we can move up the, move up the chain of command. So Pete, the CRCOG, they don't really listen to us. They would listen to the DOT is what you're saying because it's a state road or. Because, it, because it's a state road, there are specific provisions in the study uh, grant application about their support for that. So 
Um, we actually reached out to Krog first to get clarification on that. And he gave me the contact people at uh, DOT that would be uh, in a decision-making uh, capacity. Uh, and as I said, they did not, did not follow up with us uh, on our interest. So uh, I mean, that's where the position really could help, you know, focusing in on that, making sure we follow up, get going down other roads to see, um, you know, who else we need to talk to, that kind of thing. So. Is there a strict deadline? The deadline is passed. Okay. It was April 26th, right? Yes, or 24th or something like that, yeah. Okay. Any other questions regarding Salstein Highway? Great. Uh, Don, you can also uh, say that the mayor has joined the call as well. If you'd like to put um, him in on the attendance list, that would be great. Great, thank uh, you. You're welcome. Um, Peter, CIP? So um, obviously that's related to the town budget process. So maybe we uh, you know, discuss that when we get to that budget item. The only uh, related uh, matter to uh, point out is that I did get um, the numbers from the finance department that we were looking for, for the, uh, status of our facade improvement program budget. And that includes town funding as well as uh, state funding. And at this point in time, they have indicated to me that from the two sources of funding, we presently have $139,000, let's just say $140,000 available for facade improvement projects. We did ask for some additional CIP money to replenish that. So I just wanted to make sure uh, everybody's aware of the numbers we just received from the finance department. And how much did we request, uh, Pete? Was it 50,000? Yes. Okay, so in light of some of the stuff that we're discussing, maybe we should talk about how that money's been allotted and maybe we, maybe we can get back to the council with something uh, regarding um, the item that we talked about regarding Salstein Highway. Um, okay, any other questions regarding CIP? Obviously that's budget related. Great, restaurant directory, Pete. Um, I thought we were, we were opting out of that. Uh, well, I, I just put it on there, we have not, progress that, um, not that we, we won't still maybe progress that with the other towns, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll be putting that on the, on the back burner, I think. Okay. Any questions on the restaurant directory? I know Judy, you were involved. Yep, Judy. Uh, yes, Peter, um, we do have a listing and a QR code, correct? We do, and we put that out, we put a little flyer together uh, probably right. two months ago. That, yep. Yep. So my question is, can you give some of those flyers to uh, Carol Bruce, who's at the information booth for the Bikes on Main? Sure. Because last weekend, uh, we had tons of people who were asking, where should we go for lunch? And, you know, we're pointing one way and pointing the other way and um, telling people where they could get something. And that would be so helpful. Sure. How many do you think... Um, I would give her a hundred and the QR code. It, well, it's on the, it's on the, it's on the, it's on the, it's on the sheet. Okay. But, yep. but she'd have to retain one to use the QR code. Yeah. You know, my thinking is make a, a, a large QR code that people can use for their phone and just tape it to the table or whatever. So nobody walks off with it. Sure. I, that would have been very helpful last weekend. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> No, no worries. Judy, you might want to think about putting that QR code, maybe it's randomly on some of the bikes. You know, if you're looking for lunch or looking for something to do, when people are stopping, they could maybe scan right at some of the bikes if you could get. What a great idea. Maybe make a sticker out of it and put it on some right. of the bikes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to just say to the council that Judy said I had a good idea. Um, this doesn't yeah. happen often. <laughs> so I just want to be oh, on you record. You have lots of good ideas, Mark. Take note of that. This year, and they usually it. involve me working harder. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Um, 
budget, Peter, what can you share then? Oh, I'm sorry, any of the questions then on the restaurant directory? Great. Um, Peter, on budget, what can you share with us on, on the I, budget? I would defer on this agenda item to um, our town manager and our mayor, just to give you a status report. Um, uh, very good. Um, speaking of that, we'll go right to item 6A, which is Mr. Evans, the town manager. Nothing to report? Probably what? not. Just kidding. <clears throat> uh, so we'll jump in with uh, just a quick update on COVID. We've had a total of 2,500 um, positive um, individuals testing positive since March of 20. 20, uh, well over a year ago, that number has seemed to slow. Unfortunately, we have gone up at least one in deaths since last week. <clears throat> but uh, out of the, there's a total of, I'm sorry, a total of 16,674 tested, 2,516 have tested positive with 39 deaths. <clears throat> but we do seem to have slowed considerably. Um, within the population age 65 and above, 88.5%, 88.5% have been received at least one shot. 83% have been fully vaccinated. Um, in the age range 45 to 64, 74% have been uh, received their first shot with 62% completing both and being fully vac vaccinated. And then from 15, age 15 to 44, you have 62% receiving their first shot and 39% completing their second for full vaccination. And those numbers seem to be progressing forward. We have recently um, released that uh, children 12 and above um, are eligible, although we haven't moved forward or started tracking those yet. It hasn't officially started. Um, we have uh, through CCHD, Central Connecticut Health District, we've mobilized a homebound scheduling for vaccination. Right now there's about 50 people that have been identified as not uh, who, who wanted the vaccination but were unable to get to a vaccination spot. Um, and so CCHD is coordinating those efforts to do that. Um, we're still looking at uh, you know, a mask requirement that's or in place. We don't know if that'll lessen um, but if the general mantra is if you can't socially distant, um, then you want to keep the mask on and have that level of precaution. Um, as part of that, I have a group of individuals within uh, town who are evaluating a reopen plan for buildings, as well as a kind of a timeline and a plan for returning to um, in-person meetings. The caveat being, and part of the problem being, is uh, a combination of technology issue we have a number of individuals who uh, like the idea of Zoom, um, are not prepared to go to meetings. They like the accessibility that Zoom provides in terms of transparency and information. Um, but our technology here is not set up or capable of handling the combination of two. In other words, we can live stream um, or we can do Zoom live stream, but we can't do both and, and have an in-person meeting as well as um, as well as effectively or efficiently do the combination of two. So we're kind of working on that. I prefer not to have a zero sum uh, response to it. Um, so we're trying to get around that. We are in the orange level. Um, this is week, it looks like week two, we might be in orange. Um, in conversations with surrounding communities and CCHD, we're kind of looking more towards being in the yellow before we go for a full opening plan. Um, with uh, some maybe modifications based off of when taxes are due. Um, currently the town hall is by appointment only with the exception of tax and uh, assessor. Um, we are looking at pros and cons of going full open versus still balancing that off, allowing taxes to come in. Uh, we do get a lot of foot traffic in here in the month of July to pay taxes. Individuals still like to pay things in person, get that receipt in their hand. So we have to make accommodations for that. Um, budget process, we are, have, uh, council and I have met a number of times to do workshops as well as deliberations. Um, we are sort of in a holding pattern for some things that are going on right now. The first is that the state hasn't finished their budget. Uh, the, it looks like the legislative 
arm has given us a nice little boost potentially in what we might receive. Uh, but until something's voted on and determined, we're still kind of in fluctuation with a lot of what ifs. The second component of that is we're verifying the amount of federal funds that we're eligible for through the American Recovery Act or Response Act. I keep I keep changing the name on me because it's different tranches of funds. Um, so we're looking at the combination of those and we just received guidance from the state or from federal government through the state um, on how you can use those funds. There was an interim final rule provided two nights ago. We've kind of been tearing into it to see how we can use it and what flexibility we have to apply it. Um, it's a considerable amount of funds. Frankly, there's potentially an economic development component that we could consider, but it, until we know exactly how we can use it, we really can't go down that path. Uh, let's see, we have introduced the search for a new police chief after 47 years, Chief Satran is retiring. Um, on August 31st, we will, um, is his last day. So in preparation for that, uh, the town has retained retain strategic government resources to handle um, a search process, nationwide search process. Um, the, uh, they are coming to town May 17th through the 19th to meet with a combination of uh, 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 potential interested parties um, from the town to provide input. There will be a virtual um, public information meeting, for lack of a better term, a virtual uh, conversation with residents on the 18th at 6 p.m. Um, where the uh, SGR will lead the group through kind of a conversation about what the next chief, what are the attributes desired in the next chief, um, you know, what are the what are the barriers, what are the impediments, what are the potential issues, concerns that a new chief might have to face so that we can create a profile, um, a community profile that will go out as part of the notification to solicit resume responses and SGR, strategic government resources will basically handle that process to whittle down those applications to a smaller percentage of applications so that we can review it. And we're really trying to engage community input on this, but there will also be meetings with council, meetings with department staff here because it will be part of the management team as well as existing command staff in the department, the union, um, so that we can get really a, a nice mix of input of what the needs are in the community and the EDIC will be invited as well. Um, number of improvements going on within town, Derek Greger, and town engineer is working on $9 million plus worth of um, improvements within the community. Uh, there's last week, there was a virtual, virtual public hearing for the community connectivity grant. I think it was just shy of $400,000 that the town received from the state. Um, uh, Alpine Dam, Improvements, again, close to a million dollars received from the state for survey design and repair work that needs to be done on uh, a dam with concerns for failure. Um, for those of you who have been driving down through old Weathersfield, Church Street, um, not uh, the MDC water project is well underway. They've recently repaved the area um, and now they're doing striping um, or they should be doing striping. I haven't looked out there today, but shortly. Um, as we've discussed before, the town was also a recipient of funding to address uh, bike and pedestrian safety around Great Meadow, Great Meadow Road. Um, the town is working on um, surveying from Great Meadow Road to Hart Street to the bridge for the installation of new sidewalks and safety improvements to connect that uh, DOT trail project that connects us to Glastonbury. Um, I've noticed spring paving is underway. I've seen the trucks out there. Uh, street sweeping, curb repair, pothole repair. There's a lot of it this time of year after the after the winter. Um, general park maintenance, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it's pretty much a quick summary. Not so quick summary, but I'll stop there. With any questions? Mr. Manager, you mentioned the last meeting, the beautification um, uh, group. I uh, was looking for volunteers. Um, I, was there, I was, are they still looking for volunteers? 
They are. Um, Margaret Sachs and I have not had a follow-up conversation since then. Um, and the individual from the from the high school that I had been communicating with had to do a kind of a timeout with some stuff going on at school with graduation coming up in preparation. But there's still very much. I mean, it was a, a kind of a recent back and forth about who's doing what. And Margaret and I just haven't had a chance to sit down. Okay. So we're, we'd like to engage few, in what we can. I have a few people who might be interested. Who would they? contact is there a um who would be the person to contact on that or if you have an email yep. or something if you could send that that would be great i do have a few people who i mentioned that to that have green thumbs that would like to be a part of it um and with regards to um uh chiefs of trend are they is there any type of an event being planned uh retirement event anything from the town or privately do anything have you heard anything about that my high assumption is that there will be, that's typically handled by a, a group within the police department. Um, yep. But I would, I would assume that after, you know, such a lengthy and you know, reputable career with the town that um, there will be something in the mix, but I don't know. But you haven't that. heard anything as of yet. I'm sure there will be, but you haven't heard anything. Yeah. Okay, right. great. It'll be sometime after the summer, Mark. Thank you, thank you, Tom. Um, Questions for the manager, Cindy? Yeah, quick question. I'm just trying to understand the pots of money and then the initiatives on sidewalk and uh, pedestrian improvements. So you mentioned the $9 million improvement and then um, there's a grant for sidewalk and safety in the, in the, in the meadows. Um, and there was also an initiative uh, put together by the UConn students. Is that connected to any of that or is that another unfunded initiative? No, so the $9 million includes all of the initiatives that he's working on right now. So it's a mix of funding, it's town funding, it's state funding, there's probably some federal mix in there. Um, and so those individual things that I picked on were just a couple individual things that I that I mentioned uh, that are in process. There's also Wolcott Hill Road, uh, you guys have probably some have heard of some of these, right? Wolcott Hill Road, um, uh, streetscape improvement. Um, and so, there, I mean, he's got a lot on his plate. I just kind of picked a Cherry picked a few to talk about. Right, um, and when I saw the presentation, yep. it was, um, he mentioned the price tag and it just wasn't clear whether it would be funded or how. So it, that those improvements that UConn uh, students uh, proposed ha will be able to be funded? I don't know which. They're uh, not, no, those are, those are not funded. It, those were presented as uh, ideas for future funding uh, possibilities project. as they present themselves. Okay. We are pursuing some funding for some um, um, repeat flashing lighting at certain mid-block uh, crosswalks. Um, not sure if we'll get that funding, but some of those Yukon student projects recommended that in certain locations. So there is a potential for that to be funded potentially first. Um, but those Yukon students have actually budgeted every one of the projects. So we now have specific uh, funding values if uh, funding sources become available in the future. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for Gary or for Peter? Okay, guys, thank you. Pat Pentolo, are you with us, sir? I'm double dipping Zooms right now. <laughs> okay. Um, if you are able to, uh, if you want to, Pat, to hold off on your report, I can uh, let you go maybe 10, 15 minutes after everybody else is done if you need some time. Uh, if, it, it, if, if it pleases everybody, I think uh, Mayor Mike Rell will give my report. Uh, I can kind of give an update. Uh, okay. so, you know, it, it's very similar to what Gary had just mentioned. Um, but because of the concerns about how to be able to spend or what we can spend the federal ARP funds on, uh, the governor did give an extension to municipalities for their budget adoption. Um, by ordinance, our budget adoption date is uh, May 15th. And just because we didn't know exactly what would be or, and how we can spend those funds, uh, we did extend to June 30th, our budget deadline, uh, but don't, uh, don't think that it's gonna go all the way to June 30th. Um, you know, Mike O'Neill, our finance director has told us 
that you know he needs a couple weeks to be able to prepare uh, tax bills to go out with uh, whatever we come up with for a uh, a mill rate. So most likely within the next two weeks, we'll probably have a budget adoption, uh, hopefully sooner if we get um, uh, guidance from OPM and uh, the Department of Treasury on how to spend the ARP funds. Uh, we are looking at the budget. We have had, I don't know, two, maybe three budget deliberations already. Uh, we did have presentations from all the department heads uh, about two weeks ago, we ran through the exercise of going line by line with department heads uh, on priorities, um, which ones uh, they feel comfortable, you know, not only keeping, but, you know, some that could um, have some, uh, you know, cuts to some of their light items. We are going through that right now, uh, both sides, uh, you know, I know the Democrat caucus is is caucusing this weekend as well to go over similar to what we are, um, where we are with a budget and hopefully we can come up with a balanced budget uh, within, like I said, the next two weeks. Um, both the town and the school board of ed will be receiving federal funds. So we're working with the board of ed to see exactly where um, they plan on utilizing those funds. And if there's anything that um, may come off of budget for the town, uh, that would help us, um, you know, balance out a budget for both the board of ed side and the town side. Um, recently, I would say probably in the last 10 days, we did get some bad news about one of the fire trucks, engine 11. Yeah, I think it was engine 11 out of company one here in old Weathersfield, uh, is, uh, due for major repairs. So that kind of put a hole in our budget of about $170,000 to fix that truck. Um, town manager did put in some contingency money into there just in case it needs to go beyond the $170,000. Um, but that truck will be fixed within, what did they say? Three months, Gary, I believe, uh, was yep. the time to have that one back. We do have a backup that is running right now just in case. Uh, so the public's um, not in any jeopardy or anything like that. We do have a, a fully functioning uh, engine uh, in company one right now. Um, as far as other things that are going on with the budget or, or with town council, we did approve a contract for uh, dispatch and town uh, employees at the last council meeting. Um, I had the... Uh, Breakdown of that contract up, so bear with me. Um, it's a three-year contract. It looks like it would be, um, you know, a total of increase of for salary of about one hundred nine thousand two hundred eighty-eight dollars over the the three years. Uh, but however, there is some changes to their medical cost share, four hundred one contributions, OPEB contributions, and pension contributions are all going up. Um, so it's a balance between uh, pay increases or salary increases, but also increases for the employee to contribute into um, their health care and their uh, retirement. Um, as far as anything else uh, related to the town side, it's actually been pretty quiet um, aside from the budget. So we're all just kind of focusing on the budget for right now. Gary did give a pretty good overview of what the departments are doing. Um, you know, hats off to both Derek Greger for now, you know, spring and summer projects. It's the time to start doing some work. Uh, as you see, as you drive around, physical services at, are out there. You know, we still have to mow the lawns of the schools until the kids are out of school. They have to be done weekly. Uh, sports are back. Uh, games are being played. Practices are being held. So uh, Sally Katz from Physical Services and her team are doing a great job to, to make sure that uh, spring sports you know, can kick off uh, as best as possible. Obviously last year, we didn't get a chance to do those, um, but uh, everybody's happy that sports are coming back. And um, so far, you know, as Gary mentioned, we are in the decline with our number of cases, number of hospitalizations, um, Gary had mentioned the mask mandate. I heard a rumor today that the governor will be loosening the mask mandate for outdoors. 
um, which would affect some of the sports, but, but not many, but more importantly, um, uh, spectators at sporting events. Um, I think after 14 months, people probably have not only one, but two masks on them at all times. So I leave it up to the discretion of, of the public. If you are fully vaccinated, um, you know, if you're comfortable and the governor relaxes the executive orders on, or the guidance on mask mandates, then, um, you know, obviously it's your prerogative, but people can still wear them. Uh, I don't think he's relaxing them for indoor uh, use uh, of masks just yet. Uh, a lot of his uh, executive orders were to expire on May 19th um, under a new law that just passed last night in the state Senate under an emergency certification that is extended until July 20th. That will um, most likely you know, keep a lot of those executive orders in place, uh, but the governor uh, and his legal team right now are you know, going through which ones they can relax and which ones need to be carried forward. Uh, they did a sister bill in the House and it should be taken up at the Senate at some point, which would um, give the legislative oversight uh, of those executive orders, any new executive orders going forward, uh, both in and out of session, what they can, um, you know, if they don't support them, you know, they can uh, reject them or um, they, they vote on them for the first time, uh, rather than just let them be executive orders. Um, you know, that's kind of the update that I've got, uh, as of right now, uh, like I said, Gary did a pretty good job of giving a, a synopsis of what's going on through the town. I'm happy to answer any questions. Hey, Mike, it's Tom Petlow. I just hey, have Tom. a question. You, you were talking about how much to spend for the fire truck. I know it's probably almost impossible to get a fire truck right now, but what's a new one cost? Uh, it, they did have down uh, 600 and some thousand dollars for a new fire truck. We questioned that because we did purchase two new fire trucks about three years ago and they were upwards of around uh, $800,000, but the the one that would match for engine 11 was coming in about $200,000 less, around $600,000. It just seems that, that I know those, the ones that are breaking down are probably over 20 years old, correct? This one is a 1993, so just shy of 20 years. But um, the spare that we have, I believe, is a 1974, and we do have... Uh, I don't know if I have it on this same document, but we do have a list of fire trucks. That one is, you know, one of our older fire trucks. Uh, but the uh, chief did say that with the work that is being done on this particular fire truck, that it would last another 10 to 15 years, which would get us, like I said, 28, maybe 30 year old fire truck, which is the typical lifespan of, uh, of one of these fire trucks. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Yeah, and it's it's a matter of do we pay? And listen, I'm I'm just like most of the people on this Zoom call. I look at a town budget like I do at my home budget. You know, if I've got an air conditioner that I can put six hundred dollars of repair and it it lasts me ten years, or I have to buy a new, you know, three thousand dollars system which will last me a little bit longer. You know, I would love to buy the the, the brand new one, but you know, if if we can get ten to fifteen years out of a $170,000 fix on an engine rather than putting more money on the bond or bond more money. Um, that's kind of the way I'm leaning. Uh, we've also got a couple of other items that are coming off of our bond um, payments, but we still are paying for the high school. We're still paying for Keisha. We're still paying for the radio, uh, the PD, you know, um, radio system. Uh, back of our mind, we're still thinking about what the Board of Ed may be considering for new elementary schools, uh, two rebuilt schools and two refurnished or refurbished schools. So, you know, I don't know the numbers right now. It's nearly, I wanted to say $49 million would be our share of that if we did decide to go forward with that so or if the municipality or the, you know the residents wanted to go forward with that 
so that would call you know that would put us more uh, on the um, bonded indebtedness. I get it. Okay, thank you. I just like to keep them. Uh, I like to keep our volunteers as long as we could keep them volunteers. That's all. Yeah, you're not kidding. It gets it gets pricey when we have to pay for a um, fire department. Thank you. Any other questions for there? And while I see Tom on here, or Tom Carson, I did see your email, Tom. I did read through it. Yes, you know, I, I scratched my head when I saw that the Ames building was getting money down in Rocky Hill. Um, you know, I think when the, the budget process is over and, and we can finally put COVID in the back rear view mirror, um, you know, Gary, Peter, Council will be discussing, you know, bond projects that we can talk to our legislators with. Um, we do have a pretty good relationship with Congressman Larson's office. So if there is any kind of federal funds that could come in, obviously this would be the group I would want to, you know, present those funds to. I feel strongly in economic development. Um, not only does it is it good for the town, but it's good for attracting folks to our town. So. Um, but I do thank you, Tom, for that email. Mr. Mayor, you gave me a perfect segue. Um, I don't know if you were um, on the, our uh, call at the beginning, we we're talking about the Southstein Highway. Um, you talk about um, funding and whatnot and things that are good for the town. Obviously, um, we've asked um, through Gary, uh, a placeholder uh, for someone to coordinate efforts uh, and to turn rocks over to find potential funding uh, we talked about the, the current federal climate. We think there's going to be a significant amount of money being around from an infrastructure perspective. And we were hoping that we could get um, uh, someone really living 24 seven uh, moving forward on some initiatives on what we can do on the South Dean Highway. And we've been very pragmatic and very realistic in what we can and can't do. Uh, but in light of what Tom was talking about on getting funding um, from state and or federal for things like the Ames building, et cetera. We want to have somebody in our camp thinking about this 24 seven right now. So we're hoping that there's support uh, from the council. I didn't know if you, there was anything you needed more from us um, or anybody we should out, uh, have outreach to uh, regarding this particular position. But we think from an ROI perspective, um, it would be a, a, a good investment and we're confident with the right person. And that's really my biggest concern is that whoever this individual would be, they would be the right person for that, for the job. The, the money certainly is important, but I think the human capital is just as important. Some people who can go out there and easily, I think, pay for themselves by bringing and attracting some funding to the town. And again, I just didn't know if there's anything else that we can do um, to help keep that in front of the council in a positive light. Uh, there's, we've had some discussions on it. Nobody, I'm definitely not opposed to it. You know, I, I think that uh, the, if anything, I would like that person to be a, a full-time position. Um, and quite possibly, we got to work the numbers to see if we could use any of the federal ARP funds to, to bridge that gap between a, a part-time salary to a full-time salary. Um, you know, I never want to pay for something with one-time revenue, but I think that is an important position to, uh, to uh, fill. So if right. it's definitely going to be a, a part-time person, my hope is somehow we can make it a full-time position. Yeah, I don't think you would get any pushback from us. We've, we've said that, or I've said, my, speaking purely for myself, that I think 50000 is a very good start, um, uh, but I don't think it's a great finish um, on what we really need for that department. I, I couldn't agree more with, with, your, with, your, with your comments. Thank you for that, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the mayor? Come on, Great. George. You're all, George is always good for a question on PNZ. You're too quiet. I am quiet, right. A lot of things going through my mind about the highway and all that stuff and the, the need for a new bridge down at 91 to make it a decent interchange, for example. But uh, until we have studies and uh, DOT gets with it and uh, wants to work with us, I'm, I'm a little disappointed hearing all of that. But uh, you want, to, want me to report now? Uh, Mark on planning and zoning. Please, please do, Mr. Oikel. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. The uh, commission did not hold their second their second meeting last month. Uh, I guess there's not a lot of activity, but Peter gave you 
a briefing on what's going on in the, the office and what we might be facing in the future a bit. But uh, one thing we had been doing over uh, the last two meetings where we, hold, we were holding a public hearing on defense regulations in town. Now you might think like I do at times that fence regulations aren't the biggest deal, but it appears like uh, they're in the minds of the, the people in town, uh, they do get concerned with them and what we're doing. The uh, commissioners during that continued hearing over two meetings and we'll continue it at our next meeting, I believe, uh, before we take action is that uh, there was great concern on the corner lots and uh, the, especially on the side street from a corner lot and uh, whether the fencing is opaque and can be and should be. And uh, I think it is a big concern in town and I've heard even a comment or two about a couple corners in town, including Prospect and, uh, and uh, that, that, that area. Anyway. Also, the Oxio people turn out on these meetings. They had a problem there a couple of years ago with fencing on a, a, a lot that faced out, I believe, uh, on Maple Street. And uh, so you got, you got to treat these fence regulations seriously when we come up with them. There was also some concern during the hearings, uh, I got to it at the end of them, uh, about corner lots, not just fencing, but uh, vegetation on corner lots and that the town has to uh, manage that better because I believe there is a uh, requirement that you don't plant within 30 feet trees or shrubbery that's too high and cuts down visibility. And a lot of this fencing issue on corners was a matter of visibility and our town enforcement officer has to uh, approve some of it uh, when we do approve fencing regulations. So uh, if any of you, uh, a concern, you can talk to Peter or come to the next uh, meeting of the planning and zoning. I'm sure we'll be taking up the fencing regulations so you can check with him to be sure of that. That's about all I've got to talk about. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, for your report. Um, any questions for, for Commissioner Oichel? Great, Judy Heritage. You're on mute, Miss Judy. Yep. Got it. It takes a while. Um, so uh, not too much to uh, talk about. Uh, we did talk about uh, the rack cards that uh, advertise for Old Weathersfield um, are going back up in in uh, other areas. Wherever there's a, a stop, um, they'll be wherever we had them before. They'll be going back up again. Um, also, I did make a suggestion for, and maybe because <clears throat> the mayor, I don't see him anymore, he, he's not on, but uh, yes, he is, and for Gary and anybody on the council, I made a suggestion that we add videos of, uh, you know, Jesse Smith does the wonderful videos of old, of historic Weathersfield, and every once in a while I turn on channel 16, and there's just a sign there with the mayor's name and Gary's name, the town manager's names, and that's it. But wouldn't it be nice to have these streaming all the time? He's got several um, from past years as well. And then it's it's free advertising for the town. So for tourism perspective, I think that would be really helpful. Um, and obviously Bikes on Main is amazing. Uh, the bikes are so creative and so adorable, and we've got lots and lots of people coming to see Old Weathersfield. And <clears throat> I do say to everybody, be careful what you wish for, because the parking is gone, although people are using the Keeney lot. Um, but then uh, the traffic is very heavy on Main Street. So we, as we're sitting there, we're discussing where the crosswalks should be and where we could put extra parking and all that. So um, it's a very good thing for Old Weatherstone. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Are they going to put a walkway in and out of lot? Not what? In and out of that lot, Judy. 
Oh, uh, I don't know. That's that's some that's not I me. I thought that was mentioned at one time by Peter or over was, the last and, year. And we do need one there. We do oh, need badly. One. Yeah, absolutely. I Any know. answers from the mayor or Peter is this the one coming out of Keeney? You mean by Keeney? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I have to, um, I'll pull up. I won't be able to get my finger on it quickly, but I'll pull up. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. I believe Derek um, and the police department were working on a on a proposal to strike, but I'm not exactly sure where, how much closer to Keeney it actually is, or uh, well, I know it's closer to Keeney. It's a question of how close to the lot entrance is it. But uh, well, I don't think it would be a bad thing to have two, one directly across from the Keeney and one on the side of the uh, the lot. Oh, I George, definitely think George, so. it's difficult to walk in there. Uh, George, yeah, in yes. answer to your question, there is a proposed crosswalk at the uh, exit to the parking lot at the Keeney. It would be south of the driveway. Uh, the old Weathersfield parking study recommended a sidewalk along the driveway connecting to the parking lot, but that is not in the uh, old Weathersfield uh, grant project. That would have to be a separate project. Peter, while, you. while you're here, can I ask you another question in the same area? The, you, you said signage six months ago or more uh, would be changed at the fire station parking lot to accommodate additional parking. Uh, is that going in or I didn't think it was and I walked down there a lot so I didn't see it in. I still see most of the parking lot in front of the uh, entrance to the garage there is fire uh, oriented parking and uh, where is the public parking going to go in? and are you going to sign it so so George if you remember we presented a uh, preliminary plan for that whole parking lot to the planning and zoning commission last year uh, there we are um, looking into funding possibilities for that um, we did put a revised cost estimate together and provided it to the town manager for a potential funding source. So uh, we're waiting at this point to see if uh, that funding might be available to us. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Peter. I, uh, I thought okay. we had the money for it. I no, apologize. we do not have the money for it. So, um, and the, so we are working with all of those property owners on an overall plan, which would expand additional parking and uh, connect the properties together and, and that kind of thing. So uh, at this point, there's no uh, funding for it, but we are hopeful that we can acquire some as part of uh, some of the other efforts that are going on. What we've done um, is to, uh, what engineering has done and, and with Peter's review as well is kind of a phased approach in case we can't find funding for the full amount. Um, my hope is that we can maybe achieve phase one this year, but I haven't gone to the Historic District Commission yet um, to get their input. Um, and I'm hoping by the end of May, I'll be able to do so. Um, but we're doing our best to identify sources of funding to um, improve this. And parking is becoming challenging in Old Weathersfield. Um, you know, there's the pro and the con of this type of growth. We have a lot of people who wanna be in Old Weathersfield, down in Old Weathersfield, we got no place to park. So still working that out. Well, our, our house backs up to the basketball court. So Judy, Daisy and I, to, we're gonna make ham and cheese sandwiches and we're gonna sell them out of the back there. So if people are looking for something to eat, you can just bring them back to the basketball court if, if you wouldn't mind. Good, Thank Good. you. Um, you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Manager, um, any, uh, speaking of parking, any news with our friends at First Church on a potential opportunity there for parking? Uh, we've had some conversations as of recently. Um, we're, we're treading light, lightly to do this correctly so that we don't offend church patrons. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, in the next, I don't know, I would say a couple of weeks, we have that tightened down um, to something that Peter and I met, um, met with the church again, just to kind of figure out where we are and, and test the waters. And obviously, they want to be a good community partner. They're still committed to being a good community partner. Um, we just need to make sure that we've created a protection mechanism on for, uh, individuals who are members of the church or going to the church to ensure that their uh, their primary spaces are are protected. 
And so we're kind of working out the details with that, potentially with some signage and maybe a strong agreement. But you know, those details of how do you pull, and I'm air quoting the word police the area, ensure that it's clean, ensure that people are parking there are being responsible. We're kind of working those those out. And I think we have some good suggestions. We just have to make sure all parties agree. Um, if things were to happen in a positive way, uh, Mr. Manager, how many spots do you think might be available? Uh, 60? Pete, where did we, we kind of paste it out to get an idea. I don't want to commit to say we're going to get all 60, but sure. our, our, our eyeballs were kind of like counting, Ooh, could we get that many? But, um, you know, that's our push. Whether or not we'll get that, I don't know. It might be 30. Um, or they might say 10. Well, 10 is better than nothing. So uh, whatever we get, we get. That's great. Well, th uh, thank you for the update on that, Gary. Yep. Any other questions for um, anybody? We kind of skipped around here for, for Ms. Keene. Are we good? All right, great. Um, Commerce? I have a question for Ms. Keene. If oh. I may be off talk, but, but Judy, your golf tournament, is that all full or it is? There's, uh, I think, room for one foursome now because we had somebody cancel. Okay. But that's it. That's it. Thank you. Somebody We've done very me. well despite COVID. So. Awesome. Great. That rolls into you, Deb. You're up. Uh, so we are, we're hosting an event on June 9th that I want to put out there. Um, we're calling it Back to Business, where it's going to be at the Country Club five to seven hors d'oeuvres, uh, cocktails, just so everybody can get together and, um, you know, network again, meet, you know, people that you haven't seen in a while. And there's a lot of new people that have joined the chamber. So I think it'll be a great event. So I will send that out to all you individually. Great. Get it up on the Great Elm as well. Yeah, thank you. Anything else, Deb? Uh, that's all I have for now for the EDIC. Short and sweet. Yeah. Um, I have nothing to report. Um, I know, Peter, we were talking about uh, uh, another meeting of the Finance Committee um, to discuss um, the tax side of it. Did you want to, uh, you know, we'll get through, actually. We'll get through. But we'll, let me wrap up here, and then we'll get to that. Um, anything on marketing and communications, Peter? I know we talked about the mailer, so anything else there? Uh, nothing other than what we've talked about. Um, we may need another um, social media um, sit down just to kind of see what we've been up to and how we can keep plugging away at that. Great. Yeah, um, just, you, and Marco, you and Marco are, are paying that, correct, sir? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just going out every once in a while and taking a picture. You know, they have the framing up on the Popeyes and, you know, Chase Bank. And, you know, if you just go back and hit some of the things maybe that you've already posted and um, just to show people sort of that there's some movement, anytime there's construction, you know, just week to week, you could always post a new picture and, and, and um, get positive reactions from that. We, we might have a young man who wants to, um, spend some time learning, you know, economic development and that kind of thing, who is very uh, social media savvy. So we may have somebody who uh, can volunteer and, and uh, kind of kick that up a, a bit, so. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, the younger, the better. Um, Pete, can we add under reports? Can we add a social media report? Just add that as a line item on here? Sure. Thank you, sir. Um, so Tom, going back and you know, the, the, the article, uh, on Ames, and I think it was, was it a half a million dollars that they secured? Is that correct? Yeah. Rocky Hill got a half a million dollars for, for that project and another $400,000 for their, uh, park, um, in the last round of state bonding. Um, so yeah, the 900,000, you know, and I just, I just sort of see, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing a lot on Rocky Hill now because there's a lot of stuff going on in Rocky Hill. Yeah. And, Rocky Hills get a lot of money and the DOT is doing a lot of work there. And the fact that they won't even return our phone calls makes me nervous and angry. Well, you're, yeah, you're kind of reading my mind. Uh, we really should have a conversation on that. We don't need to have one now, but I think we do should have a conversation on that. Um, uh, but 
anyway, I don't want to digress at this moment. I told my stuff I had a hard stop coming up. Um, but we, we should bring up again. I'll make a note to bring that up again. Um, Peter, financial strategies? So we do have a, we're probably going to get a couple of facade applications in very soon. Um, so it, it might be helpful to uh, pick a date a couple of weeks out and, um, you know, double or triple dip on some of these things so that we can, um, you know, be prepared. So maybe, um, maybe the first week of June. Okay. Bear with me for one moment. Yeah, our next meeting is June 10th. Um, you're talking the week of the 31st, Pete? Yes. Monday is Memorial Day, I think. Yep, Monday is Memorial Day. Um, I could possibly do uh, Wednesday the 2nd, if that would work. Works for me. All right, guys. So if you'd like to attend, that would be Wednesday, excuse me, Wednesday, uh, June 2nd. Um, is 8.30 okay, Peter? It's okay with me. Yep. Okay, great. Um, if everybody could take a moment and uh, review the minutes. I know Dawn's on mute, but I'm gonna give her an A plus on the minutes. As I said earlier, uh, the minutes make us look like we're actually doing something, which I really like. Thank you, Mark. Any questions or edits or additions to the minutes? We have a motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Martino, uh, second. Yeah, I'll second that. All right, thank you, Tom. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, very good. Thank you for that. Our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, June 10th, as Peter said. So we will have a meeting on the 2nd uh, at 8.30, the Finance Committee, and we'll be talking about two items. Peter, those two items we'll be talking about will be um, the tax incentive program, and the second item would be what? Potentially uh, one or two applications for oh. facade funding. Got it. Any correspondence, Peter? Sorry, no. All right, uh, it's okay. Yeah, no um, correspondence. Okay, thank you, Denise. Um, all right, um, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor, say turn to your screen. All right, guys, peace. Thank you very Thank much. You. Get vaccinated.